Good evening, brothers and sisters. Are you guys ready to praise the God of wonders, the Lord of heaven and earth? Okay, I hear one yes, one person. Yeah, all right, I hear a couple more. What a privilege to be able to be in the house of the Lord. Never want to take that for granted and to praise the Lord. So, all right, stand to your feet. Trouble knocking at my door today, I ain't gonna let it in. Worry wanna steal my joy away, I ain't gonna let it win. Cause on my best day, I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. Oh, every day is a good day. God, but when I count the ways you're good to me, you got me counting all day long. Cause on my best day, I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. Oh, every day is a good day. You're the reason why I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. God, His heart beat in my chest. No, it doesn't matter about the rest. If I got you, Lord, I'm On my best day, I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. Oh, every day is a good day. You're the reason why. On my best day, I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. Oh, every day is a good day. You're the reason why. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. God, His heart be in my chest. No, it doesn't matter. We're blessed. All right, Pastor Dean. Hey, welcome everybody. Before you sit down, let me pray. And uh, we're glad you're here tonight. Lord, thank you for this evening, Lord. Thank you for the wonderful meal that we shared together, Lord. And Father, now we've come to slow down a little bit and just to worship you and to focus on you and what you have for us tonight, Lord. We pray that you minister to us, minister through Pastor Paul, as he shares God's word tonight, and thank you for our worship team that just draws us into your presence, Lord. So thank you, and we give this night to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and be seated for just a minute, if you would. Let's pull out your ministry guide right here, because we got lots of things coming up. Sunday, two days from now, is our fall family regathering, reunion, celebration. So we're going to have a wonderful time of worship, and then we're going to go out into the park and just wherever we can find, and we're going to have a wonderful barbecue. So that's Sunday after the service. Wednesday, the art of marriage for married couples that would like to find out what makes a good marriage tick. Please come Wednesday night. If you've got children, bring them to Awana and then stay for the marriage seminar, okay? Next Friday, we have a baptism. If you want to be baptized, you need to come to the class on Sunday morning at 9. Marky, come on down, just show your face. you got to find Marky after the service tonight. There's lots of things you need to be aware of if you want to be baptized. So baptism right here next Friday, but Sunday morning class, okay? Thank you, Marky. Find Marky afterwards. Men's breakfast coming up on the 23rd. Baby shower for Jessica McCormick on the 23rd. Men's retreat 
coming up also. So keep this handy for you to make reference to. God bless you. We're glad you're here. Let's stand and continue our time of worship. We actually have one more announcement. It's Isaiah's birthday today. Come on out and do your dance. Okay, okay let's get it again. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Isaiah. Happy birthday to you. All right. Thank the Lord for another day. We're going to be singing One Way Jesus. Can I get everybody to stand up, please? And adoration for the Lord. Because we're going to fix and to get busy for Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on. you got to put your hands together. Because this one's for Jesus. Yeah. Come on. This is how it goes. Here we go. You are the way, the truth, and the life. We live by faith and not by sight. For you, living all for you. Come on, lift the Lord up. Woo. You are the way, the truth, and the life. We live by faith and not by sight. For you, living all for you. Come on, let's sing Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was lost, and I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now, now I see. Come on, church, let's lift him up. We're singing, you are the way. truth and the life we live by faith and not by sight for you living all for you come on let's sing amazing grace amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me hallelujah and I once was lost but now so excited about that song and singing that song brings life liberty and praise to our Heavenly Father God of wonders we were just talking about that earlier and how our Heavenly Father is among us the Spirit of the Lord is within us and our Father is the creator of all the galaxies all the heavens and he is holy, holy, holy. So join us in singing this song. Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky, the heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. 
praise the Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning, I will celebrate the light. When I stumble in the darkness, to the Lord God Almighty who reigns. And we are going to continue always. We speak the name of Jesus in this house of prayer. And it never gets old to heaven's ears, to our ears. And because his name is powerful and it delivers. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Over fear and all anxiety. 
anxiety to every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, oh I speak the holy name, Jesus. Let me hear you shout Jesus. Jesus in the darkness, over every enemy, Jesus, oh, Jesus for my family, oh, I speak the holy name, Jesus, cause your name, your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life, he's breaking every shadows burn like a fire your name your name your name is power your name is healing your name is life do you believe it do you believe it break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a fire we're gonna do another shout from the mountains shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family oh I speak the holy name Jesus Whoa. your name is God I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within his presence. I speak Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Jesus! Yes, our Redeemer, our Savior. Hallelujah. We are going to turn it over to Pastor Paul to deliver the message. To Hallelujah. You. Turn with me to Psalms 133. Psalms 133, verse 1. And I want to share with you, family, kids, you guys are dismissed. Buckle and bounce. 
beat feet, tuck tail, and travel. Do it moving. Amen. If you're at Psalm 133, verse 1, say amen. amen. If you're not, say hold up. We're not baptizing right now. No, I mean when you call him up as our answer. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hey, you guys, on the real, real, from the corazón, your heart, how many of you appreciated what our elders did tonight, man, in that kitchen? No, on the real, real, man, you guys had, you guys violated the number one rule. You guys ate as much as you wanted, but you guys got hurt. Some of you look hurt, man. Yeah, you got, I'm talking about you, Thomas. Yeah. Amen. Guys, what does Psalm 133 verse 1 tell us? Say that again, Ashley. Wow. Give it up, man. How many of you were here for uh, the first part of this three-part series on created for community? Create, Dennis, you've been here for every single service come rain. That's one of the faithful community members, man. Praise the Lord. So we started this series, family, called Created for Community. Part one described the purpose of why God created us for community. And it all started, I need somebody to take care of these two guys over here. Can I get some, a little help over here with the two youngsters right here? Okay, so listen, the purpose for community was to glorify God, family. The purpose for community was to glorify God. Remember in Genesis, it talked about, let us create man in what? Our image, community. Oh, but it's not good that man be alone. So we're going to create a helper. Community. Oh, but it wasn't good enough there. He said to man and woman, be fruitful and multiply. Community. Folks, the purpose was to glorify God. What was the plan? Last week we covered the plan. In glorifying God, we start with our vertical community. Spending time with God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Identifying the Godhead three in one. And then it goes to the horizontal and it talks about the plan for community within a marriage. And then it goes on to family, goes on to neighborhood, to our workplace, to our local church. And tonight, we're going to wrap it up with the impact that a God-created community has in our lives. And I want to open up this service by way of introduction by sharing with you, family, that because Pollock Pines Community Church is such a community within our community, Ashley, Connor, and Jordan have been coming to our church because through Helping Ends Meet on the Friday food giveaway that all of us benefit and are blessed by, Ashley was telling me 
earlier today how blessed she is, how blessed her kids are, how blessed they are that we have a Friday night service because Sundays her husband works. His only day off. Raise your hand, Ashley. I asked permission before I put her on blast. But folks, she's so excited at the impact of this community church that I don't think we could get rid of Ashley and her two boys now. They are in it to win it. Give it up for Jesus. So folks, let's go. Uh, let me focus your attention on the book of Acts. Turn with me to Acts chapter 2. And we're going to go over 10 verses on what type of an impact the church had in first century Christianity. We're going to start there. And then we're going to talk about three impacts that God-created community has in each of our life. And then we're going to wrap it up with the application on how we could continue to glorify God as a God-created community. How we could live out the plan of being a God-created community and how the impact is going to continue in our community here at Pollock Pines. Can I get one? Amen. Amen. So folks, let's turn to the book of Acts and let me just give a brief introduction. In the book of Acts, it starts out with Jesus telling the disciples that you guys have spent three years with me. I have taught you everything I needed to teach you in order for you to be fully devoted followers of Christ. I spent three years, and I did, and then I taught you guys. But now, I'm getting ready to go to heaven, to God the Father. I'm getting ready to buckle and bounce myself. And what I'm going to do is the Father and I are sending, we're sending the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you guys and you're going to receive power. Power to do what, family? Power to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the remotest parts of the world. Here we are, folks, 2,000 years later, witnesses for Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are a light in this God-created community to shine in the darkness. Amen? Amen? And folks, I'm excited about this message because it's had a great impact on so many of our lives beginning at this church corporately as a God-created community. So let's start in verse 37, Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Now this is Peter's first sermon that he is preaching, and here's what it says in verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in their teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together 
and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your holy word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for setting the example and doing what you did in your public ministry for three years. Thank you for training and developing the disciples, the apostles. Thank you so much, Father and Lord Jesus, for sending the Holy Spirit to come down and dwell with us and be our power, our teacher, and our reminder of all that you taught us, especially in the area of being a God-created community. So te teach us tonight what we need to be taught. Touch our hearts and minds that we could be fully devoted followers of Christ and continue to walk, investing in the kingdom of God, glorifying you, for we ask this in Jesus' name, and God's people said, Amen. Folks, that's one of my favorite passages. First century church that had it all right. They set the example. They did what they were told. And folks, I'm excited because I'm going to share with you some principles that we as a church on this hilltop could continue to grow in alignment with God's word. Amen? Amen. So notice that the church was greatly impact, impacted when they repented and got saved and were baptized. Verses 37 and 38. Folks, they were greatly impacted also when they received the promises from God for their families. Folks, how many of us have a desire that family members, loved ones of ours would be impacted by the salvation and love of the Lord Jesus Christ? Can I see a show of hands? Amen to that. Because they were and we are too with several members and loved ones that are here tonight with us. In verse 40, it says, they received exhortation. They received exhortation. This morning, Thomas and I taught Bible study at Christlike Services Men's Home, the men and women's home. And I went there to teach on 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 18, how not to lose heart. And the Holy Spirit shut me down and said, you're going to teach on exhortation. Hold up. I didn't study. I didn't prepare. I didn't get the... I'm the teacher here. Folks, we went around. How many was there, uh, Tom? It's about 22 people? 21. 21 people, and we went around that living room, and all we did was shared from the heart what other people meant to us in that room. Share something good about somebody in this room that has impacted your heart. With tears laughter, sincerity of, sincerity of heart, folks, Christ-like service was greatly impacted this morning by the exhortation of one another. How many of us have ever been impacted by a great exhortation of, look, look at this, they're all unified right here, hands and everything exhorting. Praise the Lord. That's what happened in first century Christianity 
But wait, there's more. Verse 41, they received a substantial increase in numbers. They received a substantial increase in numbers. Folks, when people that you and I know hear about the exhortation that flows in this church, you think this church isn't going to be impacted and grow in a substantial number? It is. Not because of what the world has to offer them, but there's something different in Jesus' name when we put hands together, when we lock eyes in eyes, heart in heart, give hugs, say words of encouragement. Folks, this church is going to continue to grow, go, and glow. Amen? Amen. Verse 30, uh, verse 42. They devoted themselves to the teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread together and to prayer. Without what I just mentioned in verse 42, there's no real substance, folks. We have to have the teachings of God's word. We have to come together and break bread. Did we not break bread together tonight? Wasn't that good stuff? Amen. Good. Give it up. Give it up for Jesus. And folks, we're a church that prays. We believe prayer changes things. I'm one of them. And as a result of what I just mentioned, family, in verse 43, they kept feeling a sense of awe as many signs and wonders were happening. Folks, have you ever looked around you at what God is doing in this church and in the community around us with you and I involved in the community? Have you ever sensed a sense of wonder? A lot of you are smiling like, yes. Folks, we have an opportunity at the end of this month to reach out to a man and his family that are suffering from depression, that is suicidal. Their marriage is really, really in crisis. They have a handicapped little boy that they're struggling to make ends meet. Mom is working two jobs. The husband is so depressed. He is in a fetal position. He cried out in the media and people in this community responded. And at the end of the month, if God doesn't come before that and take us to heaven, we're going to get together and we're going to feel that sense of awe when we love on this family. When we love on them, family. How many of you would like to be a part of that, even by prayer? See, that's what I mean. Hey, you guys, I, I feel in awe right now. Verse 44, they all believed and had all things in common. Imagine that. They all believed, that's the most vital step. They came together and they had all things in common. Folks, I'll be the first to raise both my hands. Some of you folks are so uncommon to me. You guys are like, amen, so are you, pastor. But you know what? When we come into each other's life, we find that commonality in the agape love of God Almighty. We find the commonality in loving each other, loving God, and doing whatever it takes to become common with each other. Amen? amen. I love it. I love it. So here, here's a little bit of conviction. In verse 45, they sold what they had and they gave to the needy ones. They sold what they had and they gave to the needy ones. See, at this church, folks, 
we reach out and help the needy and we just pray for the greedy. Oh, folks, we have some greedy people that come into this church and want to just hustle us. They just want to hustle us and work us. While there is truly needy people in our community that are out there waiting for a hand up, not a hand out. And so as pastors and leaders, God gives us that discernment to weed out the scammers, the shammers. And we help the needy folks. I'm so grateful for that. And in verse 46 and 47... They were impacted because they continued in oneness, community, having meals at each other's houses with an attitude of gratitude and with sincerity of heart and receiving favor from God and all the people. As a result of that, they grew in numbers daily. For the glory of God. How many of you guys like to break bread at other people's houses? I love it. I love going to people's houses. And eating until the cows moo. Danielle in the back back there, she cooks a mean. A mean macaroni salad. Danielle number two is terrific at tamales and tacos. You go to Pastor Jim and Peggy's house and you get a smorgasbord of whatever they serve you and you better not complain. <laughs> Folks, we all are so loving and generous when we open up our homes, and don't anybody leave it, oh, Pastor Paul was bagging on me because I have never had him over the house. No. Come over to our house. Let me ask my wife first, though. <laughs> we had Josh and Maggie Freeland over our house a couple weeks ago, and we had tamales, and we had some other stuff I can't remember because... We eat so much. But folks, before you invite Josh Freeland, make sure you have plenty. That boy could eat, folks. He is six foot five, weighs about 280, and he starts out with four tamales just to... Pastor's like, where you at, man? I want some of those. <laughs> Folks, it's wonderful. I'm talking and I'm bragging on Jesus. Folks, being a God-created community is not just coming to Friday and, and Wednesdays and Tuesdays and, and Sunday mornings. It's breaking bread together, living together. Folks, I have never in my life Love to go to TJ Maxx, Ross's, and walk down Main Street and window shop. But you know what? My wife loves it. Community. Suzanne is saying, preach it, brother. Preach it. And Glenn's saying, kill game, brother. Zip it. Folks, I do declare this evening, family, that our Pollock Pines Community Church is experiencing lots of the same impact of first century Christianity when the Holy Spirit came upon them, and we're doing it here, you guys. But I want to go just a little bit deeper, and I want to personalize it. And I want to share three major impacts a God-created community has in our life. Number one, impacts the way God sees us in a good and pleasant way, according to Psalms 
133, verse 1. How good and how wonderful it is when the brethren come together in harmony, community. A sub-point is in 2 Chronicles 16, 9. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking for those whose heart is loyal to him. Folks, when we're coming together as a God-created community and we're loving on each other, we're loving on God. We're loving on God. Number two, it impacts the way the world sees us living out God's love and created community. The Word of God says in John 13, 35, love is the answer. Love is the answer. By this, all men will know that ye are my disciples if you have love one for another. It does something. In our community, when people are window shopping and they see how you guys love one another, how you guys start. Look what we did with the five little children that got ran over months ago. We have stood with them until Juniper made it home and is running amok. Just being a Juniper child. Healed, restored. The family, do you think that family was impacted? You know it, huh, Dennis? They were impacted just like we were because we loved on our community and the community at large knows that Paulette Pines Community Church is a loving, loving, and loving church in Paulette Pines Hilltop. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you something. A God-created community loves at all times and impacts the unloved people of our community and brings them to the love of Christ through repentance. How many of us know people in our community that need to repent? I know, including myself. Folks, I came to repentance through God's love. Not through Bible pounding on my head, not through throwing rocks, not through conviction, not through judgmental attitudes. The Holy Spirit loved me to the cross of Jesus Christ, to the foot of the cross on my knees, and I've been here ever since. And when I'm struggling, I know that I could call any one of you on the phone. And your great love will encourage me to repent. How many of you could use a call every now and then by somebody like that? Amen. 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 Just a real loving call, folks. Number it impacts our personal relationship with God and others by being pleasing and acceptable to them. The word of God says in Psalms 19 verse 14, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable to thee, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Folks, how many of you guys like a pleasing and acceptable word from somebody when you're hurting. It's a no-brainer. That's our church. We have a reputation for that. It also impacts us, folks, when we practice what Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 says. As a God-created community, impact the people by not letting any unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification, 
that it will bring grace to those who hear. And finally, we know what Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 says about the fruit of the Holy Spirit living out love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Folks, if you see anybody in your life modeling that, is that individual going to have a great impact on your life? That, my friends, is a God-created community. By way of application, number one, let us embrace and leave this place with the principles of being created by God to be a community in all aspects of our life. Number two, let us partner together like the church in Acts in our local church here. Let us embrace one another and say, I need to hang out with Mike more often. I need to be around Kathy. I need to have friends like Carolyn and Tim. If I could only convince Glenn and Suzanne Hansen that I want to be a bug on the wall to see how they have been married for a bazillion years with a bazillion children, and they're still smiling. <laughs> Folks, we have to do this together because we were created for togetherness. Community with unity is God-created community. Nobody in this sanctuary should feel like a solo bolo long ranger Christian. We all need each other. We all need to love our unloved community, family members, and unless we start with us here, it's never going to be accomplished out there. What we teach here in this church, listen to me, family. We need to know God. We need to grow in God. We need to serve God. We need to share God. And we need to love God with all of our heart, mind, so, what are you doing, Debbie? You're doing that? Yeah, amen. The great commandment is who we are, loving God. The great commission is what we do. And the great God-created community is what we live out in our lives. Folks, part of being a God-created community is praying for one another. Folks, we have a family tonight that is sending off their son to go be a Marine. Hoorah! I had this kid in my life four years ago when God was teaching me patience. I took him under my wing and took him on job sites. He was 14 or he was 16 years old. I never thought in a million years he would ever 
join our armed forces. Because if he even thought about it back then, I was going to call the President of the United States. <laughs> Folks, it's with an honor that tonight we're going to pray for Gianni Reyes. I'm going to ask his precious mother to come up here. And we're going to pray him out into the military force of Camp Pendleton. And he's going to give his service. And then I'm going to ask April and her kids and family to come up here because, well, Gianni's going through boot camp. They're going to be going through a spiritual boot camp here on the hilltop, and we need to pray for them. They're going through a time in their life where they need community. They need us, family. And April has been doing everything she could do to stay connected with us, and she's here tonight. That's been an impact on us. And so I'm going to ask everyone just to stand. Just extend your hand out to these two families. And just pray with me, family. Father, we come before you, and in the mighty name of Jesus, we come asking you to do above and beyond what we could ask, think, or imagine for these two families. As Gianni and I sat and our elder uh, John yesterday prayed over him corporately, Father, we want to pray again as a church over him and his family as he takes a leap of faith to serve his country, to honor you, and to help people throughout the world. God, we need your protection over him. Father, we need your wisdom. Holy Spirit, we need you to be the power and the teaching and the conviction and the guidance in his life. We ask you first and foremost, oh God, to keep Gianni close to you surrendered to you, yielding to you, that he could see what a great impact you're going to have in his life as he is reminded that his church back home is praying for him, is loving him, is here for him. And may that impact be glorifying to you, Father. Be with Tara and with Sean and with the rest of the family as they pray for him, as they support him, as they encourage him. And may he come back, hopefully, during the holiday seasons <laughs> that we could see him with his new haircut <laughs> and that he survived boot camp, Father. Because within the ranks of the Marines in that boot camp, they're a community. May you connect him with a God-created community. And God, I just switch over to April, to Jacob, to Anthony. God, that you would continue to do whatever it takes to draw them closer to you, to each other, and to this church. And that we would embrace them as a family. That we would guide them, direct them, love them, encourage them. So that they are greatly impact, impacted to daily seeking you, Father. Your kingdom, your righteousness. Father, and finally, I just pray for the anointing over them all. As they embrace each other. That they would embrace you together individually and that you would be honored and glorified for loving us and loving them god help us to be a church that is honoring to you glorifying to you 
And God, now as we close out this service, we just pray that you would continue to add to your church daily, that you would continue to do wonders in this hilltop and amongst us individually and as families and as a local church. Father, be with us tomorrow as we go to Olivehurst, to the Let's Go Youth Rally, and we do evangelism in the Marysville, Yuba City area with Metanoia Church. Help us as our youth group, as our youth pastor, as our family goes together as a small group to impact a large community. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, what you will continue to do because your word says that he who began a good work in us will complete it until you're coming, Lord Jesus. So in our lives, Lord, be glorified. We pray in Jesus' name and God's people said, Amen. as the worship team comes, how many of you would like to be impacted by a couple more worship songs? Let us just remain standing and let the Holy Spirit impact our lives as we close out our time in worship. Thank you for letting me share, family. God bless you guys. As we were extending our arms, I noticed that my arms started to get tired. I think a few get of your arms started to get tired. Ready, but what I thought about is when this young man goes into the military, he is going to have to be using a lot of strength that he probably hasn't used for a while. And, and that extension of prayer and that sacrifice for those extended hands towards you and what you're going to be doing is going to be a sacrifice as well, using your physical body. And again, we prayed over your spirit. So I just wanted to share that, that um, we acknowledge that, you know, for all of those who do those strenuous activities, that this is nothing compared to what they're going to be doing and giving for our countries, extending that hand of prayer. So. Blessing and this song, we're just gonna say this as a prayer over all of the families here and even extended families beyond who is here. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn.
favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening and you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you you and keep you and his face is smiling upon you amen in the name of jesus yeshua be blessed amen